Not sure. Because Hart got third. Yeah, I remember Hart getting third. Gonzi was like, it, he was right on the edge, I think. Seventh third or sixth. Because MC was Some ninth MC was and Naniwa nine, nine wasn't here, so that. Right. Yeah. All uh, right, let's uh, see if the players are ready. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this map started now. Uh, heart ready, Gonzi. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this go started. Go. So in Tome Valley, uh, it definitely is a Terran map. Right. So <laughs> well, that works out for both these players. But, uh, but more why importantly, do you say that? Yeah. it's a mech map. Really? It's a very common map for players to mech on. And that's basically because the third base is so close you can defend it pretty much from your natural just by spreading your tanks out um, and you don't have too many problems here so where are we uh, you, you want to take you want to take the intro or you want me to do it we'll get, we'll get you for the third game you want to do that yeah I'll save myself all that right we'll, sa we'll save that you we'll save you. all right so down here in the bottom right hand corner from team complexity the third place finisher at the MLG winter championships it is none other than Hart. and up here in the top right hand corner the seventh slash six slash maybe fifth place finisher from the MLG Winter Championships. Uh, it is Gonzi, formerly of Team Slayers, up here as the Blue Terran. I would say that Gonzi's probably the more uh, celebrated slash well-known player between these two, but Hart is really this player that is just up and coming. A lot of people say that he is quite cheesy, but regardless, I mean, he gets wins. He, he puts up results, and that's really all you can ask from a player. Yeah, that's true. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, win or lose. Or sorry, the strategy you use doesn't matter as long as you get the win. Uh, and Hart has shown that he's he's very capable of doing that. Yeah. So right. we do see Gonzi. Looks like he's going for a similar build as last game. Uh, whereas Hart is going for a very fast Rax. Right. And Hart actually throwing down a gas geyser, so we'll be seeing gas first against uh, just like a standard gas play. Gonzi again not scouting early on. Hart actually going for an early scout. And this actually uh, is very significant in that Hart will know the gas first and he can basically tailor his build around it. Gas first, while it gives you a lot of interesting options, it also gives you a fairly limited number of options. And so you can kind of bake, make a build that will counter the vast, like the, the li more limited range of a gas first build. Right, right. So let's see if uh, we. S what, was it Gonzi or Hart that went for that extra SCV? It was Hart last time, correct? Before uh, Orbital? You know, I, I'm not actually sure. It's not something that I consider significant enough to actually remember. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Uh, but Gonzi I, I, I would game. imagine it was the same player as, as before. Okay, okay. Factory going down for Gonzi. And over here, Gas uh, has been finished and already started to mine. And his factory is going to be somewhat delayed, but with this scout. Uh, like you said, Hart really knows what's going on here. Gonzi, once again, uh, not really scouting at all here in their early game. I and think Hart, he might have just been tricked. This is actually a little strange here. He's, oh, uh, he should have gotten that SCV if Hart had. He didn't had, stutter step. Yeah, his he, marine, needed, yeah. he needed to stutter a little bit harder. Um, but I think he's just using that to, to get rid of that SCV. He's not going to push into the main or anything. Uh, and actually, Gonzi not going for Banshees this game. Or if he's... Or not not going for the same same kind of obvious banshee is what is what he's doing actually. Yeah. Like we saw in the last game, usually if you're going for the fastest banshee possible, you're building that tech lab on the barracks. Right. Uh, and so the SCV scout got into his base. He decided, I'm not going to show you what I'm doing. I'm not going to be that obvious about it. And then he builds the tech lab on the factory, and so he's probably going to yeah. He's going to put that starport on and he's going to start making banshees. Yeah. You can already see he has uh, the, uh, the gas for him. Yeah. Now, what is uh, what is hard up to here? We see him already adding on the reactor to this Rax, uh, getting that starport. Probably going to be going with a very quick Viking uh, as soon as the starport is finished, correct? Yeah, I'm not actually sure here. Does he have... So Hart does have two gases, yeah. um, but he... I guess we'll have to see if he puts that tech lab on the starport. Looks like he is. Yeah, and I think this is actually... I don't actually agree with this decision. Sort uh, of a delayed Banshee. Yeah, so basically what's going to happen here if Gonzi plays kind of the way you would expect is... Oh, no, he's getting a Raven. Okay, that's what that's what Hart's uh, doing. Okay. He's getting a fast Raven. Because um, what could happen is if, if Hart gets a Banshee and then gets a Viking, 
Gonzi's Banshee will be in his base way before the Banshee finishes, and Gonzi's own Viking will be, will get out way before Hart's Banshee has an opportunity to really do any damage. But what's Hart, what Hart's going to do here, and this is kind of what I was talking about, he knows he went gas first, he gets a fast Raven, he's safe against Cloak Banshee, he starts making tanks, so he's safe against Hellions, and he makes a ton of Marines so that he's got a big, strong army. Uh, and I think we'll see Hart actually push out um, in the next, probably when he has two or three tanks, he's going to push out and just try and go kill Gonzi. Yeah, you can even see that, uh, what, was Gonzi trying to push in here or was making sure that nothing came out of that base with this uh, Hellion and the Marines right yeah, outside? He, he was using the Marines and Hellions. It was kind of, it's kind of one of those pressure moves, like if your opponent uh, early. went for a really fast expand or something, then you might go pressure with it. Um, but... The Banshee poked in, he saw he had plenty of units, so he just backs up. And I think, can we go to Gonzi's vision for just a moment? Sure. And then check out Hart's base. So Hart sees the double tech labs here. So he, uh, Gonzi should be thinking that this, there's some kind of push coming. And I, you notice how he's got everything rallied to the front. He's constantly building units. Uh, the siege tank for Gonzi is not quite finished, and that's actually a big deal. But he doesn't want to have to retreat up into his ramp. So a big battle here. Notice how both units, both players spreading out their units. And the medevac actually healing a ton of damage. The siege tank gets out and Gonzi, Gonzi does get the Banshee. Gonzi going to clean this up and now he is at a tremendous advantage. Did he drop uh, two auto turrets there? Yeah, he definitely did. Okay. Uh, auto turrets <coughs> helping him out a bit, but not not giving him the advantage he needs. And where were those two siege tanks? That yeah. actually would have been a... Oh, sorry, wait. One of them. One yeah, of them was yeah, saved. The one, other one of them was in the battle, and the other one was rallied to it. Right. He really wants to pull some SUVs, though, re repair that siege tank. If he had siege mode with that push, I think it absolutely would have worked. Or if he had just waited a little bit longer. Right. Um, and, I you know, at that point, if, if uh, Hart actually pulled SUVs, he would be very... Uh, much further behind than, than he actually currently is. So that might be why you just see him retreating as he knows that that attack just cost him so much. His opponent is somewhat ahead, uh, so it looks like he's going to fall back, especially after seeing that expansion already mining. Yeah, and so now Hart is going for kind of the, the desperation move that we've seen in some of the other games, Cloak Banshee. Yeah. Um, and if... Let's uh, let's look at Gonzi's base and see what his production looks like. So Gonzi does not have a tech lab on that starport. Um, I don't think he even has an engineering bay. Nope, he just started one. Yep. So he will be able to put up turrets in time for this, but he won't have a raven out, and he's just making... No, he's actually making a second viking. Um, so Gonzi in an okay p position to deal with the Cloak Banshee, but it really... Uh -oh. oh, no, he's going to see it. Oh, no. Oh, that's going to be That's going to be real bad. And now... A Banshee this late, you would expect it to be cloaked, uh, and there's the turrets going up from Gonzi immediately. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's basically the worst thing that could have happened for Hart in that position. Uh, yeah, two turrets going up. Gonzi, no tech, though. He is getting plus one, but he's not getting uh, tech labs yet, or I guess he just started a tech lab, so his stim and shields is going to be quite late. Now, with seeing that uh, Banshee, you can see that Gonzi just fell back. So even though it, it's not actively doing anything right now against Gonzi, it's making sure that he stays inside of his base till it's cleared up. And we can even see him try to get his Marines in position to ensure a kill on this with a scan. But it looks like uh, Hart is privy to that, so he's going to fall back. Yeah, and I think the Banshee here, he'll be able to do a, a decent amount of control. And notice how he's using the Banshee to, to direct Gonzi's attention while he moves out with the rest of his army. Yeah. If he can siege up in a good spot, he might have a, a good opportunity here to do some damage. But he really needs Gonzi's army to be a little bit more out of position. And here uh -oh. we go. Is he going to siege up in time? Uh, no. Looks like, yeah. Does, does yeah. Hart have siege mode? No. Oh Did he, he didn't he hasn't started researching. He's definitely it, yeah. forgotten it again. I'm not sure what, what's going on with him today, but um, I'm not I'm not feeling the same level of play that I saw from him yesterday. Um, yep, and there we go. See yep. him once again researching it. And I mean that's that's the second game now in a row. It, we'll see if I mean if he loses the series, that's gonna be one of those mistakes that never happens again. Yeah, you definitely will be he'll be he he won't forget that for yeah. sure. And I'm uh, sure I'm sure Gonzi will go over and be like, "Hey, 
Forgot Siege mode two games in a row, man. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll be drilled into him. So here we see Gonzi uh, doing yep. a light contain. Uh, probably won't stick around too long, though, because he doesn't want to get overwhelmed uh, with the quick reinforcements that Hart does uh, get here. But you can actually Siege here's up and take yep. the gas out, which in this mech style, yeah. Siege here and... Uh, Maybe elevator some units up. Notice how he's using the Vikings to spot. The Marines kind of being covered by the siege tanks there. Uh, he actually only drops one, which is a little weird. I would expect him to drop more in that back area. Um, but right now, Gonzi in a dominating position. Right. And, and losing this gas, explain to people how important having four gas uh, compared to your opponent's three really is. Yeah, I mean, basically, you can't, you can't get all your upgrades that you want when you're stuck on three gases. Siege tanks, stim shields, plus one weapons, medevacs, all this stuff takes a lot of gas, oh, wow. and you really need that fourth gas to make it all work out. Um, and so, Hart right now, basically, if he builds a tank, he's going to run out of gas. And yeah. that makes it hard for him to do a lot of things. The supply is a big difference. If Hart goes for this, oh, wow. he might get, no, here it is. This is Gonzi, he's gonna take the flank. No siege mode here. Wow, and good GG. game. Uh, Gonzi's positioning just felt like it, it was exactly where he needed to be every point in that game. I mean, you even see all, saw him in that last flank position. Uh, Hart moved out. As soon as he saw it, Gonzi was uh, ready with that second reinforcement on the other side of him. And uh, I, uh, he's just getting outplayed completely, I feel like. Gonzi is just running over hard in this series. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling a lot of... Uh, kind of strategic decisions coming through and showing us the difference between these players. It's more just both players end up doing something very similar, and Gonzi's been doing it better. Right, right. They yeah. both went for that Banshee play. Gonzi just made, got more got more mileage out of his units. Right. Uh, and then in that second game, that attack should have been able to break Gonzi uh, if maybe Hart had executed it a little bit better, had siege mode, maybe put those turrets down a little bit, uh, hit a little bit later, have just a, like that second tank would have made a big difference. Um, but, I don't know, Gonzi, Gonzi playing very well. Yeah, and I mean, even when uh, we saw Hart go across with that cloaked Banshee, uh, Gonzi did kind of catch a break there as uh, he was going on the, the inner, or the outside ridge, I should, should say, and caught it uh, even before cloak was done. So yeah. had that gotten over, we might have seen uh, somewhat of an economic gain for Hart, but Gonzi was just, he was always in the lead in that match. Yeah, so. definitely. I think if if that Banshee had kind of appeared in Gonzi's base with Cloak, yeah. that could have turned the tide, but Gonzi doing a very good job of map awareness, map scouting, yeah. he sends his units around, he makes sure he's checking, doesn't want to get caught by anything unawares. Yeah, and you know, it, it's the, the Zell Naga Tower on that map and TBT are pretty much in any map. Uh, the Zell Naga Tower has always played such a pivotal role. Because uh, it's either where the Terran's going to sit and kind of conquer the map, but on a map like that with the side ridges, you can't really do that at all. So you always see the player taking the side ridge right outside your opponent's base or back at home. You can't sit in the center of that map. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a good thing to control. It limits your opponent's options, but it does not completely demolish your opponent's ability right. to move out without It's not like the Zell Naga Tower on uh, Shattered Temple, for example. Yeah. Where if you sit at that outside your opponent's space, he really cannot do anything. Yeah, without you knowing. Um, yeah. And so Gonzi, Gonzi took that into account and he, was, he made sure he was well aware of what was going on. Yeah, so uh, we are waiting for the players to uh, say they are good to go here. The next map will be Cloud Kingdom. Uh, just in general, you know, this is uh, one of the newer maps. What are your thoughts on it? It's a Terran map. Is every map a Terran map? Terran always <laughs> wins. I guess there you go. Have you been watching this tournament? That's true. What about this this set? Every game a Terran <laughs> has won. That's, I can't deny that fact. This is fact. one of my favorite maps. Really? Um, and I, I find it very interesting. I dislike the excessive use of destructible rocks. Just, I guess I have a bad a bad feeling about destructible rocks after seeing them used in so many kind of weird positions. But I like the watchtower placement. I like how there's two. You can kind of control it from the high ground. Um, the third base is relatively close, but you can still pressure it. You still have a lot of different angles. Uh, it's just not, it's not a simple map. It's not a map where, like on Antigua, control the center. You control both of those bases. You get a lot of vision. That's really good.